Welcome to Avian Jay's Adventures 7. I am back in New Jersey uh, for the first time in a while and I'm gonna be exploring some of the bigger parts you know in New Jersey I explored a reservoir and I explored a little stream and now I'm at a river and it's actually a fairly shallow river I mean as far as rivers go I can walk out fairly far in this river without going underwater or anything like that. But this river is actually called the Laminar River. It's a tributary to the Raritan, which is the big river near me. It's the river that uh, most of the big interesting fish are in in my area. So because it's a tributary and it connects to that river, a lot of the stuff that's in that big cool Raritan River is also in here, is also in this river. So I'm gonna be exploring today and seeing what I can come across and uh, hopefully we'll find some cool stuff, some of the bigger stuff that you would find in the rivers, not just the little streams. And before I even get started, I have the best news I've ever had doing Avian Jay's Adventures. You may remember multiple times in Avian Jay's Adventures I've brought up my really, really crappy net that I hated, that I bought for $20 off Amazon, and then the handle would break, and then I would buy another one off Amazon, and I bought that net like 10 times. I mean, that company got my business, I will say. I was not like rigid enough to be like, no, I'm not buying this net anymore because it's so crap, because it was the only really good option for dip netting, for what I do, because I don't use a hook and line. I need a net to swing through the water. Well, finally, I have gotten a new net. And it is so good. It's amazing quality. So, Jonah's Aquarium sent me a net. Uh, they actually sent me three nets with different mesh sizes. And the net has the really thin mesh that is perfect for minnows. It's got the square shape so I can run it along the bottom. It detaches from a strong metal frame, metal pole. It's absolutely amazing. Now they didn't sponsor this episode, but they did send me the net for free and it's amazing like i've already been using a little bit of my local stream in my first swing in my local stream that i have gone to for you know a decade now i caught a fathead minnow i have never caught a fathead minnow in a decade of being there but i finally got the right mesh size got a high quality net and now i'm getting new stuff i'm finding things that i didn't even know were there so i am really excited to use this in the river today it has all sorts of parts i even have an extra little extender so I can even make the handle longer. It comes apart so easily. It's absolutely amazing. So because they sent me them for free and because they're so amazing, I am going to put the link in the description and on screen. So if you do need a dip net ever, please just trust me. It has nothing to do with them supporting me necessarily, but just trust me as someone who has done this for a long time. This is the best dip net I've ever come across. And I, 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 I don't know, I can't say enough nice things about it. You probably won't hear me shut up about it for the rest of the video, but I'm gonna shut up now so that we can actually catch some fish. But dude, it's so nice. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this little side part that I'm hanging out at where the water comes in, this is where it's really easy to find some cool fish. If you're ever exploring a river, look for something like this, these little side parts, because they're shallower and you know a lot of things get stuck here. It looks like there's someone who got stuck here is not enjoying it very much, I would say. It's a very pretty fish though. Very cool minnow. Now that's the kind of thing I will never see in my local stream, but here in the river, these kind of things are just around. We'll end up food for somebody else, so I'm just gonna leave him be, but it's super cool that you can just find stuff like that. I'm excited to actually uh, take some swings. In fact, I think I'm just gonna run my net through this vegetation here and see what I come across. All right, I just swung my net through this big pile of vegetation here. I got a stick, I got a lot of moss, and based on the flopping I'm seeing, oh wow, look at that. Look at that beautiful, beautiful, I believe it's a smallmouth bass based on the markings on the operculum and the orange on the tail. That is a beautiful, beautiful fish. Oopsies, hey sir, please come back. Uh, we also caught ourselves a tessellated darter, the very common darter around here in New Jersey, one of the three species, but by far the most common one. Tons of little bugs. I mean, you can tell how fine this mesh is and how nice it is by how many little bugs I'm catching. Look at all the little things moving around. 
that's how nice the net is, that I can catch stuff like this. If you were looking for little bugs, you would have a great time as well. Caught this guy, who is some sort of creek chub. This here, which is also a creek chub. Caught a crayfish. There's a crayfish if you're interested in crayfish. Oh shit, look at this bug. There's a giant stick bug of some sort. Then there's a bluegill sunfish. Oh my God. Just from one little swing in a small area, we caught all of this stuff. It's amazing. Just grabbed some of the algae here and got a quick nab of what at first appears to be tadpoles. But upon closer inspection, we have the very first catfish on Avian Jay's adventures. These are bullheads. I would have to be more specific to give you a better ID than just that, but they are bullhead catfish. And they are beautiful. Beautiful little guys. And they all hang out in all these little calm spots like this under vegetation. So just by sweeping through some algae with a good net, which I never would have caught any of these before, but just by sweeping through some algae with a good net, caught myself multiple bullhead catfish. Babies, of course, but very cool. Another swing of the net, caught some snails, a creek chub, crayfish, a tessellated darter, and a rare, rare Eastern black nose dace. I say rare not because this fish is particularly rare, but in river systems, you don't see uh, black nose dace very often. They're, they're mostly a stream fish, a very small area fish, and they don't make their way up into bigger things like this. I mean, this is a fairly large like river here, although it's shallow at most parts, it's still very large. Uh, so you don't see them often here. So that's kind of cool to see that they are here. Just brought the net through this area here. And uh, as my famous phrase goes, whenever you sweep your net through a calm part of a river in New Jersey, I know it's not very catchy, just hold on with me, you catch bandits. I catch banded killifish quite easily anytime I do this. Wow, look at that. That's a breeding male. Look at how beautiful his colors are. It kind of looks like a mummy chog. And then you've got a typical, oh, okay. Hold on, man. If you guys would just be patient, I could take your picture and then put you back in the water all safe and sound. And you've got a typical female with just the, the black bars. Doesn't have any of that light blue coloration. I will put them back where they're from. Another one of the amazing things about this net. I know, I talk about the net a lot. It's amazing. As someone who's been doing this for a really long time and been really frustrated by nets, I can't tell you how euphoric it is to have a nice net. It's like learning to play guitar on like a crappy kid's guitar that was like $60 from Toys R Us. And you like played that for 10 years. And even though you were getting really good at guitar, you still had to use this crappy kid's guitar. And then someone gets you like a freaking, I don't even know, like a Fender or so, just a really, really nice guitar. <laughs> it's, it's absolutely amazing. Oh, but what I was saying is that you can clean it really easily. It doesn't have like a, an inside and an outside. So I just flip the net and everything falls out and it's clean. I mean, I didn't, I didn't wash it and do anything and it's already like everything's out of it and I'm ready to catch something else. Pretty cool. Now this guy has beautiful coloration. This is a rock bass. It's a totally different genus than the rest of the sunfish around here, but nonetheless, it is in the sunfish family. They're very easy to identify that leopard print pattern. They're very cool looking. And usually I only catch little, little juveniles and the bigger guys end up in like the lakes and reservoirs and stuff like that. But uh, just by running my net through some vegetation like this, occasionally you catch some of the stragglers some of the you know middle-aged guys that are still hanging out here and so that's pretty cool i haven't seen a rock bass really in this area before all right i'm going to try to show this net in action even though i only have one hand i've got the net and i've got a school of minnows in front of me and one-handed oh just threw it in there and look at that <laughs> it's ridiculous i mean Dude, having a thin mesh is just so nice. Like this is this is crazy. I should not be able to just do this. There are fish everywhere and I can literally just throw my net in the water and I have <laughs> way too many fish, way too many. How am I gonna even identify them all? I'm catching so goddamn many. Oh, there's some bigger ones. Uh, those look like fathead minnows, look at that. 
That is a beautiful man right there. I see these guys around here all the time. The little ones are probably the same thing, but the smaller fish get, usually the more difficult they are to identify. I mean, some of these guys could be anything with how tiny they are. So I'm gonna try and take a picture of the fathead minnow, but everybody else, I'm just gonna let go because they're a little too small for me. But it is so cool to just be able to catch them. So amazing. I am very happy. <laughs> All right, Zach from the future here. If you don't know, I record all of these videos on a phone uh, and sometimes weird things happen. Like in this video, my phone cover, my case ended up covering the microphone. Uh, so the audio is really bad here. I'll let you listen for a sec. Are in the Raritan River, but again. Yeah, so it's bad. So I'm gonna commentate over everything. Uh, this little guy is a golden shiner, which you don't commonly see in these little streams uh, unless they're really polluted and that's the only thing they can live there. Golden shiners usually find in like the bigger rivers. So finding this uh, little golden shiner was pretty cool. And now for you, I have quite the amazing story. For a long, long time, I searched for this fish, the shield darter, the third New Jersey darter in New Jersey. Uh, and I looked in a lot of different places, but they like fast, cold water. And so you really only find them at the bottom of deep rivers. I went to the point where I traveled an hour and a half north to go free diving in the Delaware River to find one of them with a photo. And then, I kid you not, four days later, I caught one just swinging for darters in this little river. This guy got lost or something of the sort uh, and ended up here. And so I caught a shield darter, one of the fish that I have searched for for a long time and had a lot of difficulty catching. I caught one just in the wild in a really easy to find place, basically two or three days after I finally found one after about a year of searching. So it was an absolutely ridiculous find uh, to just find that one was lost in the river. I'm still glad I got to see their natural, you know, habitat, but it, it was, um, interesting to just come across one like this certainly wasn't expecting it now this is something i talk about often but i think it's really important to be able to recognize pollution in your local waterways uh, and you know any stream where it stops and gets really still will look a little bit polluted to some degree because it's just a concentration of all the chemicals and everything in the water uh, but it shouldn't look like this this is basically a dead area of this river where you know the water is not moving it's piled over from rain and such and you can tell that when the water is moving it looks extremely clean and beautiful uh, but when the water stops moving uh, it becomes murky it looks dirty it smells i know you guys can't smell it but i could smell it when i was there uh, which indicates that although the river looks really clean you know at first glance it's actually got a decent bit of pollution in it there was absolutely nothing living usually in these side pools and like cleaner streams and rivers there's still some frogs you know tadpoles that can survive in it or you know little minnows if it's clean enough will be able to you know get stuck in there when it rains uh, but there was nothing i mean this pool was dead now, there's some algae but that's about it uh, and this clearly had not been separated from the river for that long i mean just since the last rain which was you know a little over a week ago uh, so this is what built up in that time, which is a clear indication that this is not as clean as it might first seem. And then, in this little net swing in this corner pool of the river, I caught a Natropus species. Now if you don't know, Natropus is a genus, a group of closely related uh, North American minnows. Uh, that is a creek chub. <laughs> but amongst with the creek chub, I caught a Natropus species, the spot tail shiner. Uh, and now Natropa species aren't the thing I get to come across very often. They're actually, you know, pretty rare in the area unless you go to streams that they're specialized in. Uh, so catching one in this stream, this spot tail shiner was super cool. I believe it's the first time that we've even caught a Natropa species in one of these Avian Jays Adventures videos. And this is my favorite genus. I look for them all over the country. I travel to find new Natropa species. I absolutely love this genus. And so it's super cool to have one finally show up in an Avian Jays Adventures video so that you guys can see the little guys that I like to study. I just caught a beetle and then a crayfish with a patterning that I have never seen before. Uh, so this is gonna be a good time to break out my new toy that I got. Sorry, Mr. Crayfish, I have to look at you real quick. Break out this new toy that I got. So give me a second and I will show you. It is absolutely amazing. It is called a macro lens. So this is basically a little lens that goes over your phone camera. So it's a little clip onto my phone camera, okay? and it magnifies the phone camera zoom. So normally a phone camera 
once you get too close it gets blurry and you can't take too detailed of pictures and so it can be really difficult for say stuff like these little crayfish here to get a really detailed image it just gets blurry as i get close but if i clip on this little macro lens now you'll see far away is you know not great but where'd the crayfish go i lost them well there's this one here if I get close and zoom in, I can take insanely high quality photos and videos to identify these crayfish. So this macro lens is really cool. I've been using it for bugs and tons of other stuff and really detailed pics of fish for identification. Uh, it's really cool, really useful. And now also with the macro lens, look at this diving beetle I caught. He's tiny, but you can literally even see the water droplets on him because of how good this macro lens is. And this is just my phone camera. I'm just using my regular phone camera and I can see the water droplets on a little beetle. It's absolutely amazing, I love it. And as an example of how amazing the macro lens is, there's this cool bug here. But that's about as close as I can get without my phone blurring and focusing on something else. But if I clip the macro lens and zoom in, I can get an amazing high quality video of this bug which looks absolutely awesome. And wonderful tools and equipment just like that that I use in these videos and I use on these adventures and I use in my day-to-day -day life to catch fish are of course provided by the people on Patreon. Uh, so thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. It's not a ton of people, I think it's less than 20, but uh, it's enough that I am able to, you know, get some cool little equipment that'll help me improve these videos and make them better. Uh, the next thing I want to try and get, if you're interested in supporting me, is a good underwater camera. My current underwater camera, as you can probably tell by past footage, is pretty bad. It's very blurry, it gets fogged very easily. Uh, so I want an underwater video camera that I can actually use in streams like this and in places that are very deep so I can get some great footage for these videos uh, without having to pull the fish out of the water necessarily myself for some of the bigger or harder fish that I can't necessarily do that for. So that's something that I am hoping to get. So if you're interested in supporting me and uh, pushing that cause, go to my Patreon. It's the top link in every description. Thank you. Now I know I haven't really talked about sunfish very much and I don't really show them off too often. Uh, it's just because they're not really my specialty, uh, but I do catch a lot of them. And for example, here is a little beautiful sunfish that I just caught swinging my net in random areas. I mean, in the past with my big net, I had to, well, you know, with my crappy Amazon net, I had to like pick a spot, I had to sight down the fish, and then I had to chase it down perfectly. And even then, I, it would slip through the net a lot of the time because the mesh just wasn't large enough and I'm working with no handle and all that. But now, I mean like any random spot of vegetation, I just like put my net in for half a second, just run it through and pick it up and I've got tons of fish. Well, Another Avian Jays Adventures past. Fish-wise, I think this might be the single most fish species I've ever caught in a day. Um, I mean, this net is amazing, and a place like a river where everything comes to and everything feeds into is just a really amazing spot to find stuff. I mean, you're just gonna come across stuff you wouldn't think would be there. I mean, the rivers connect to the ocean, and the rivers connect to other rivers, and they connect to all the tributaries that are flowing into the river. And basically what you've got is an entire watershed, a giant area of streams and rivers and brooks and the ocean uh, and where they all connect. And you know, sometimes stuff gets lost and you find weird things in weird places. And uh, today we found lots and lots of cool stuff. Baby catfish, pretty cool. The catfish, the bullheads must be spawning because they were everywhere. I mean, I think I only showed one on video, but I was catching them in every net swing. Caught ourselves a shield darter, which is a rare occurrence for me. I only caught my first shield darter within the past month. And since then I've caught like four of them. Uh, one of those things where you spend a really long time looking for something. And then the moment that you've already found it, suddenly it's everywhere. Like I had never caught a shield darter in years of trying. And then I catch one and then all of a sudden they're everywhere and I'm just catching them constantly. Uh, lots of fathead minnows, creek chubs, cool stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, it was a really enjoyable day. I enjoyed coming out to the river. It's just like a day trip, you know? I mean, it's it's connecting to the Raritan, so it's pretty close to home here in central New Jersey, and I just get to enjoy what the river has to offer. I think 
probably I caught almost everything that would be here. Um, I can almost say I've solved this location. I mean, it's hard to say that because a lot of things pass through rivers, but I feel like I could almost say like, hey, I have caught everything this river has to offer. Just a couple more species. I might have to come back at some point and see if I can find them. Maybe in like the winter when the lampreys spawn, that would be a cool avian jays adventures to do. To come here in the, in the winter when no one else is here and that's when the lampreys spawn and that's when you can find some interesting stuff. Maybe I'll try to do that. Uh, yeah. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed Avian Jays Adventures 7, maybe 8, maybe 6. I'm not good at keeping track. I hope you have a good day, and uh, I'll see you next time.